powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. The field of Democratic candidates for president grew over the weekend. I'm Mark Liverman with details on two senators who just announced their bids and President Trump's reaction. And a growing community needs its bus service to grow too. Coming up, why expanding transportation service in Bozeman and Big Sky creates some financial challenges. Good morning to you. It is 6.30 here on your Monday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Matt Elwell. Chet Lehman is off today. Matt, we start with weather, the cold, cold, cold. Yeah, and we still have some snow and ice on the roadways. Leave some extra time. They, the roads are still slick. Crews are still out trying to get things cleared up. But uh, there has been a little fresh snow, obviously, uh, over the course of the last couple of days. Temperatures for most of us down below zero. Not a lot of wind so far. We may see a few flurries at times through the day today. But our wind chill is probably our biggest issue, along with some of the ice that's left on the area roadways. Don't look for the temperatures to get above freezing anytime soon. We're going to break down, of course, your complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Matt, I like how you said the roads have been polished because they really do have that little glean on there. Thank you for that, Matt. We'll be back with him in just a moment. Here at 631, our top story for you now. A growing field of Democratic presidential contenders are entering the race for the White House. Now, over the weekend, both Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar and Senator Elizabeth Warren formally announced their presidential bids. CBS's News' Mark Liverman has our latest. And to the common good, I stand before you as the granddaughter of an iron ore miner. The race for the presidency just got even more crowded. On Sunday, Minnesota Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar made her announcement. A day earlier, Senator Elizabeth Warren threw her hat into the ring. I stand here today to declare that I am a candidate for President of the United States of America. Warren spent Sunday campaigning in Iowa and didn't waste any time attacking President Trump. She addressed Robert Mueller's ongoing Russia investigation. By the time we get to 2020, Donald Trump may not even be president. He may not even be a free person. President Trump took notice and on Twitter went after both senators. He again derided Senator Warren for claims she's part Native American and mocked Senator Klobuchar for talking about global warming in a snowstorm. Two other presidential candidates spent the weekend campaigning in South Carolina. U.S. Senators Cory Booker and Kirsten Gillibrand were both preaching a message of unity. We're not just a red America or a blue America, but we're red, white, and blue America. I'm going to govern and call on people to, um, to, to, to end this politics of pitting each other against each other, thinking that the way you get ahead is tearing other people down. There are now 10 official Democratic candidates for president. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now tonight, President Trump will be holding a rally right near the U.S.-Mexico border in El Paso, Texas. And just about a mile away, former Democratic Congressman Beto O'Rourke will appear at the March for Truth in hopes of countering the president's message on immigration. And with the expansion of both Bozeman and Big Sky city limits over the years, the bus systems are in need of adding more routes. MTN's Medeiros Bab finds out how much money it will cost to add these extra stops and if they have the money for it. Both Bozeman and Big Sky gain new residents each day, making the economy thrive and the unemployment rate low. But there are some growing pains, one of them being transportation. Western Institute manager David Cack says both cities' bus services, Streamline and Skyline, need to add more routes. I think over the next couple of years with the growth in both communities, there's going to be a push to really try and find some funding to have some increases in service. CAC says Streamline would like to add more stops to the northwest area of town, especially with the new high school coming next year. In Big Sky, CAC says two-thirds of employees commute to work because of the rising housing costs. Instead of having people drive on 191, he said it would be beneficial to add routes to get people using the bus. But with the additions in both communities comes a cost, a cost that CAC said would be around $1 million for each area. Hope people see the benefits of transit and as we have discussions with a lot of partners that, um, you know, they'll be willing to step up and invest some in, in public transportation. 
CAC says adding these extra stops would cost the systems about half of its yearly budget, which comes from partners including the Montana Department of Transportation, Montana State University, the City of Bozeman, and Big Sky Resort. Reporting from Bozeman, Medeiros Bab, MTN News. Now CAC says in order for the expansion of the routes to take place, all of the donors will have to come together to contribute. And here's a great story for you. A father and son duo from Great Falls has been in the sled dog business for the past seven years now. They call themselves the Skinny Leg, the skinny leg Sled Dogs Team. Now, MTN's Casey Hermway reports on this very unique origin of this racer and his dreams for the future. From Great Falls, Montana, Spencer Brugman. Spencer has lived his whole life unable to do traditional sports. I was born with a birth defect in my left leg that caused it to be shorter and skinnier than my right one, which means it takes about double effort per step for me to walk or run. Being hard coming from a family of football players. It used to affect me a lot. When I was growing up, both of my uh, brothers were big football players, and then my dad was in college and high school. But father and son had another plan. Spencer was reading Jack London's books, uh, Call of the Wild, and uh, some of the uh, famous sled dog books, and I was reading books about how the Yukon was, uh, uh, during the gold rush, how they used dogs. I said to my wife, you know, I'd really like to have a dog team. She said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And so I. I put it on in the back of my mind. But coming from her son, mom was easier to convince. I was in the car with my mom and I just randomly blurted out, we should start a dog sled team. And she pulled over and said, you've been talking to your dad. Neither of us knew we were interested in it. And um, so she figured it must be fate and gave us the thumbs up. Two weeks later, we had about 10 dogs and we're on our first run. I thought it was just going to be a small time thing, but my dad always dives into things head first. From 10 dogs to now 36. A dog will never let you down. You have to trust them to get you through the race, but you also have to trust them to obey you and to uh, believe you. When you start off and uh, hook the dogs up to the sled, they just go crazy and you can tell they were born to run. Both Spencer and Brett mush about three races per year. It can be anywhere from 200 to 350 miles. There's not a lot of races um, around, so um, it's a lot of training and work for so few races. And the anticipation is building for the biggest race of them all. Yeah, I did a rod. It's a thousand mile sled dog race. You're on your own. You can't have any outside help. And that's kind of a test of man and beast. It's pretty daunting uh, for sure, but uh, it got under my skin and that's why I'm going back. A long journey from what was a football family, now a sled dog family. I have something I can do that I think is a lot cooler. In Great Falls, Casey Herman, MTN News. A lot cooler, literally. Now, both Brett and Spencer mushed the Idaho Sled Dog Challenge last weekend, with Brett coming in first place. And although Spencer was too sick to mush in Montana's race to the sky, Brett ran and finished. And although Spencer is still too young to qualify for the Iditarod in Alaska, he hopes in a few years after college, he and his dad will be able to both mush in the 1,000-mile race. And this week, under the big sky, we continue to follow an amazing story. Following a car wreck that took part of her leg, she found herself unable to walk. Paralympian Megan Fisher began a new life with her furry friend and companion Betsy. Together, Betsy and Megan would start a journey back to mobility. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. Not being able to walk and being on crutches, it was really hard for me to envision who I was gonna be in the future. I wanted to play with my friends, I wanted to regain my identity as an athlete. When I couldn't walk during that period, I got paired with Betsy, my, my service dog. She's a Border Collie Blue Healer. When I was really down in, in those darker spaces, she became a huge light in my life. Anyone with a dog will say that their dog is the best, but I'm sorry, Betsy just happens to be the best. It's just, it's empirical, it's been proven, it's a fact. She was always happy to see me. She didn't care if I could walk or not. She could fetch my crutches, she could fetch my leg, she could turn on lights or open doors, but she, she had these needs and I wanted to care for her, like it gave me a purpose. 
the very simple things, like your dog has to go outside, making sure that she was fed, and then wanting to walk with her was huge. I regained that ability to walk. As a three-year-old Border Collie healer, like, she's got a lot of energy, and walking wasn't gonna cut it for her. Really, Betsy is how I found bikes. I saw people biking with their dogs around town, and I thought, maybe I could do that. And I saw people biking with their dogs in some of the recreation areas on the trails, and I'm like, maybe I can do that. I thought that would be the way to take her energy and, and channel it towards something more productive. And from that, I made more friends on the trail, and they provided a, kind of a new team, a new group, a new community for me to join. What an incredible story. Megan Fisher is a physical therapist in Missoula and continues to explore her athletic pursuits. For more stories, visit underthebigsky.com and follow them on Facebook as well. It is time for a quick break. Let's check in with Bianca Goladriga to see what's up next on CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, more of Gail's conversation with Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. In his only TV interview, hear Northam's response to the controversial yearbook photo and why he still believes he is the right person to lead the state. Plus, we visit Sully, President George H.W. Bush's service dog, how he's training for his next mission, and how service dogs can change the lives of those who have served our country. We'll see you at 7.